Then the last kind of story is the most traditional of the stories, and they're, called, they're the ones that are often referred to as the fairy tale, even though they don't have any fairies in it. You know, Snow White and Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Sleeping Beauty, uh, Little Red Riding Hood, uh, Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella, uh, a lot of, hmm? Which ones? All of those stories fall into that theme of the fairy tales. And here is where you see all of these values and things that are very typical of stories. Every culture in the world, no matter where you find, go, have these kinds of stories, okay? They're, this is not unique to Norway or Europe or the Americas. You find them everywhere in the world. And the other thing you find that's very typical are certain kinds of values and certain ideas and themes that are repeated. And um, one of them that you see a lot of in this is the youngest child is triumphs against all odds, right? Everybody else thinks the youngest kid is stupid, is not going to make it, turns out to be the hero. Just like in Home Alone, right? Home Alone is a modern fairy tale, very much so. Uh, that's why it was so popular, because <laughs> there's something, you know. So you have, they're always the number three that's repeated. Things tend to happen in threes. As you've noticed, all stories begin and end with a formula. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, right? Always begins that way, and it always ends. In English, they end, and they lived happily ever after. In Norway, that's the formula we use. Okay, so they always have a traditional beginning and a traditional ending. You'll find that all the characters are stereotypes. You're either young or you're old, you're good or you're bad, you're pretty or you're ugly, you're mean or kind, you know, you're either generous or, or not. Uh, love always conquers hate, greed is contrasted with generosity. You see all those kinds of themes, they're repeated again and again and again in those stories. And I wanted to tell you, because is it 30 or 35? Yeah. You know, it used to be 35. Okay, so hopefully I'll get it in just as the bell rings. I'll tell you one last story, which is a classic fairy tale, you know, of that genre. And most countries in the world have Cinderella stories, and Norway does not. Norway has Cinderlad or Ashlad stories. Okay, so it's never a boy, a girl, it's a boy. And he doesn't have to battle an evil stepmother, he's got to battle trolls, because, you know, this is Norway. So I'm going to end with that story. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, in a far, far away country called Norway, there lived a father and a mother who had three sons. The father was a woodcutter. He had a great job cutting down all these huge trees around his property. But one day when he was out in the woods, he was going at it so vigorously, he threw his back out and just could hardly walk home. He just crawled home into bed, hoping to get better, but weeks went by and nothing improved. You know, finally they ran out of money and almost out of food and, you know, there weren't any banks or social security or social services to help anybody in those days. So, you know, either he was going to get his sons to work or they were going to starve. So he thought, you guys got to work. And they're like, no, dad, you're just 60 years old, you know, you're not that old and you get better in no time. We don't want to chop down trees. It's too much work. It's boring. And besides, there's trolls out there. The father couldn't believe it. He said, come on, don't tell me you're frightened of trolls. When I was your age, I dealt with trolls all the time. Those creatures are stupid, don't you know? Oh, you know, they were whining, but he was kind of going after them and said, told them about how he could do it. So finally, he got him around to his way of thinking. So the first one to go out was the oldest. He was a very cool kid, definitely cool. Rolled up his sleeves, pulled up an ax, walked off into the woods. After a while, he got to a place with some really big, big trees, so he got his ax and he started to get ready to chop. Oh, he had no sooner cut the first blow than out of the woods comes this great big huge troll screaming and roaring at him, if you're cutting down my trees, I'm gonna kill you and eat you up. And the boy was so frightened, he flung his ax aside. He ran home as fast as he could and he got home. He was sweating and panting, going, Mom, Dad, you don't know how lucky you are that I'm still alive. There was like this great big huge troll out in the woods and he wanted to kill me and eat me up. I can't believe it. You call yourself my son and you run away from the troll. Why, when I was your age, I dealt with trolls all the time. But you, you just stick your tail between your legs like a cowardly dog. I'm ashamed to call you my son. 
Well, there wasn't much the boy could say to that, so he went over to the corner and sat down. So the next one to go out was the second brother, equally cool, you know, got another ax off into the woods, got to that place, and started chopping. Oh, he had no sooner struck the first blow than out of the woods again comes this great big huge troll screaming and roaring, if you're cutting down my trees, I'm going to kill you and eat you up. And he just flung his axe inside, ran on me, was out of breath, sweating, crying, Mom, Dad, you don't know how lucky you are, I'm still alive. There's a troll out there and he wanted to kill me and eat me. Oh, father, you just you call yourself my son and you run away from a troll. I can't believe it. You know, when I was your age, I dealt with those creatures all the time, but you, you're nothing but a chicken. No, oh, it wasn't too much he could say, so he went over to the corner and sat down. Well, now the next one to go out was the youngest of the three, and him they had nicknamed the Ash Lad because he liked to sit around and poke in the ashes. Oh, the brothers teased him no end. They said, what, you go out and deal with a troll? I mean, <laughs> get serious. I mean, we all know the only thing you're good for is sitting around in the fireplace poking in the ashes or hanging on to your mama's skirts. I mean, give us a break, you know. But he didn't pay any attention. He just went to his mother and asked for some food, some provisions. Well, she had not much, but she had some big, juicy white cheese curds that she gave him. And these he put in his backpack, put his pack on, got another axe, and walked off into the woods. There he found those big trees, put his back th pack down, got the axe, and started to chop. Oh! He had no sooner struck the first blow than again out of the woods comes this great, big, huge troll. If you're cutting down my trees, I'm going to kill you and eat you. But this boy now, he wasn't as slow-witted as the others. He went over to his backpack, got out one of the cheese curds, and held it up saying, if you don't watch it, I'm going to squeeze you the way I'm squeezing the water out of this white rock I have here. <laughs> I didn't know you were so strong. <laughs> oh, listen, oh, would you spare my life if I help you cut down the trees? Yeah, yeah, sure. That's a good idea. Suit yourself said the boy, and so that's what they did. They cut down trees for the rest of that day, and when they were all done, the troll, very hungry by now, said, oh, how about it? <laughs> Why don't you come to my place and we'll have a bite to eat together? Good idea, said the Ashland because there was nothing at his house. So off they went through the woods until they got to the mountain in the blue where the troll lived. And they went inside, and the troll said, Now I would like a nice pot of porridge. So um, why don't you go outside and get the, the bucket and get water from the well, and then I'll make up fire. Okay, said the ash head, went outside. But when he saw the bucket, it was the biggest thing. It was made out of huge cast iron and he couldn't even budge it. So he had to think really fast. After Biddy had an idea and he said, hey, you know, I don't think there's any point in going water for water in that little thimble of a bucket you have out there. I'm bringing in the whole well. Oh, no, no, no. I can't afford to lose my water. Listen, um, forget about it. Why don't you just make up the fire and I will go and get water in the bucket. Well, suit yourself, said the ash lad. And so that's what they did. The Ashland made up the fire. The troll got the big, huge bucket that, you know, filled it with water. And they filled that whole thing with porridge. And when they were ready to sit down, the troll said, oh, this will be nice. I'm so hungry. And he grabbed that big pot and he carried it over. But before he sat down, the Ashland said, hey, how about it? Why don't you and I have an eating competition? Oh, well, that's a great idea, thought the troll. Oh, I'm on. And he thought he was going to have a nice piece of ash lad for dessert. So he sat right down in front of that great big pot. But before the ash lad sat down, he snuck over and he got his backpack and he tied it around his stomach with a pack part in the front. And then he sat down to eat. And they ate and they ate and they ate. And after a little while, instead of the food going in his mouth, he opened the pack and he put the food in the pack. And when the pack was full, he got out his knife and he ripped a hole in it and then he could continue filling it. Well, you know, the troll saw something was going on, but he was too stupid to figure out what it was. So he just kept on eating and eating and eating. And finally he said, I am sorry, I can't eat another bite. Come on, I'm not even half full yet, said the Ashland. I don't get it. How do you do it? You're just such a little fellow. How could you eat so much? 
well, it's easy. Here's what you do. You get out your knife, you put it to your stomach, and you rip a hole in your stomach. And that way, you can eat as much as you want. Oh, won't that hurt? Big black guy like you? I don't think so. Oh, said the troll. And of course, he didn't want to be a lesser man. So he got out his knife, he put it to his stomach, and he ripped a hole in it. <laughs> and with that, he fell over, dead as a doornail, crumbled up into thousands of pieces of rock so it looked like gravel on the ground there. And the ash lad was safe. And he jumped down from his seat, ran inside the castle, and got all the gold and diamonds and silver that he could carry out of the castle and brought it home to his parents. And with that, they lived in the greatest of comfort and safety to the end of their days. Oh, Snip, snap, snoote, hat, at, eventide, ute. I did it. I got it down in time. I had to shorten it a little bit, but it worked. So there's a classic, you know, sort of youngest, youngest kid. Everybody thinks he's stupid, and he turns out to figure it out. <laughs>